Hello there Myth Hunters! In today's expedition of Epic Myths Unveiled, we take another dive into the deep as we take you to the sunken city Atlantis. This mystical realm has occupied the minds of explorers for centuries. Join us as we unravel the mysteries, sift through historical accounts and venture into the realm of speculation surrounding this fabled city. Get ready to dive into the depths of imagination and history. But first, don't forget to like this video, ring the bell and subscribe to our channel for more great stories about the most epic myths and legends. This is Atlantis Unveiled. Centuries ago, in an era where the seas were still largely uncharted, the myth of Atlantis flourished as a tantalizing legend that captivated the imaginations of sailors and dreamers across the globe. According to the legend, Atlantis lay concealed deep beneath the waves, a realm of unparalleled splendor and wisdom. The tale speaks of an advanced civilization adorned with towering palaces, dazzling gardens and technologies far ahead of their time. Atlantis was ruled by mighty sovereigns renowned for their wisdom and justice. The downfall of Atlantis is often attributed to the wrath of the gods, angered by the hubris of the Atlanteans. According to the legend, the city was said to have been swallowed by the ocean in a single night, vanishing into the depths where it now rests as a submerged treasure invisible to mortal eyes. The quest for Atlantis has inspired adventurers, scholars and explorers throughout the ages. Despite numerous expeditions and speculations, the location of Atlantis remains a mystery shrouded in the mists of the ocean. Some argue that the myth of Atlantis is merely an allegory, a tale reminding humanity of the impermanence of power and the vulnerability of complacency. Others steadfastly believe that somewhere deep beneath the waves, in a hidden realm, the remnants of Atlantis still await discovery. To understand more of the story, let's go back to the beginning. In the ancient dialogues of Plato, the tale of Atlantis emerges from the mystic pages, weaving a narrative of divine unions and the rise of an extraordinary civilization. At the heart of the saga stands Poseidon, the god of the sea, whose love for a mortal woman named Clyto set the stage for the birth of Atlantis. According to Plato's Critias, Poseidon fell deeply in love with Clyto, a mortal of exceptional beauty and virtue. Together they became the progenitors of the Atlantean lineage as Poseidon and Clyto bore five pairs of male twins. These ten royal offspring, each with their own distinct realms, would go on to rule over the vast expanse of Atlantis. Poseidon, the great deity, bestowed his divine favor upon the land, endowing it with unparalleled natural beauty and imbuing the Atlanteans with knowledge and power. The gods' influence shaped the development of this exceptional civilization, turning Atlantis into a utopia that marveled at the zenith of mortal achievement. Plato's narrative describes the magnificent city of Atlantis, its concentric rings of water and land, and the grandeur of its architecture. Poseidon's divine touch extended to the construction of the city, showcasing the god's mastery over the seas and his desire to create a haven for his mortal descendants. As the Atlanteans thrived under the guidance of Poseidon and the divine lineage, the city became a symbol of unparalleled prosperity. However, this golden age was not destined to last. The Atlanteans, driven by their own success, began to exhibit hubris and corruption, drawing the disapproval of the gods. Zeus, the king of the gods and Poseidon's brother, witnessed the moral decline of Atlantis and decided to intervene. A series of cataclysmic events unfolded, leading to the fateful submersion of the majestic city beneath the waves. The story of Atlantis, as told by Plato, reflects not only the grandeur of a mythical civilization, but also imparts a moral lesson about the consequences of human arrogance and the delicate balance between mortal endeavors and divine oversight. Poseidon and Clato's union marked the genesis of a civilization that, for a time, stood as a testament to the harmonious relationship between gods and mortals, only to succumb to the flaws inherent in the human spirit. The tale of Atlantis thus remains a timeless parable, echoing through the ages as a cautionary reminder of the intricate dance between the realms of gods and men. If Atlantis exists, the sunken city must be somewhere. 
Over the years, the quest to pinpoint the elusive Atlantis has led to numerous proposed locations, transforming the name into a generic concept detached from the specifics of Plato's account. This diversification is evident in the fact that many suggested sites are not even within the Atlantic. Today's propositions range from scholarly and archaeological hypotheses to those driven by psychic interpretations such as Edgar Cases or other pseudoscientific means, as highlighted in the disputes between Atlantis researchers Jacques Colina Girard and Giorgio Diaz Montesano. Primarily centered in or near the Mediterranean Sea, the historically proposed locations include islands like Sardinia, Crete, Santorini, also known as Thera, Sicily, Cyprus, and Malta, along with land based entities like Troy, Tartessos, and Tantalus. The narrative also extends to the Israel Sinai or Canaan and northwestern Africa, including the intriguing Richard structure in Mauritania. The eruption of Thera in the 17th or 16th century BC is a pivotal event often linked to Atlantis, as it caused a massive tsunami that some experts speculate may have devastated the nearby Minoan civilization on Crete. This catastrophic event is considered a potential inspiration for the Atlantis story. In the Atlantic Ocean, the allure of a closely related name has led to various locations being identified, including the Canary Islands, Madeira Islands and the Azores. The Canary and Madeira Islands, however, have been geologically analyzed, demonstrating a consistent pattern of uplift over the last four million years, countering Atlantis's submersion narrative. The Azores, situated in the Atlantic, have also been suggested, but geological studies reveal a history of volcanic activity rather than a sunken civilization. The idea of Atlantis in this region is often perpetuated by popular culture, aligning with the original Platonic setting. In Europe, hypotheses extend to northern regions such as Doggerland in the North Sea, Sweden and Ireland. Doggerland and Viking Bergen Island are believed to have been flooded by a mega tsunami following the Storregus slide around 6100 BC. Stone Age Ireland has been proposed as the basis of Atlantis by some, with theories suggesting a connection to the Celtic Shelf and its link to Ireland. In 2011, Professor Richard Freund and his team claimed to have found possible evidence of the Atlantis in southwestern Andalusia, particularly within the marshlands of Doñana National Park. However, Spanish scientists dismissed these claims as sensationalized, emphasizing the lack of archaeological support. Antarctica, the Caribbean, the Bermuda Triangle, and even areas in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, including Indonesia, Sundaland, and Kumari Kandam off the coast of India, have all been subjects of Atlantis' speculations. The quest for Atlantis persists, echoing through time as a testament to humanity's fascination with the mysteries of the past. From geological data, it's clear that Antarctica has been continuously and entirely covered by a thick ice cap since at least the Miocene and probably since the Lower Oligocene. This implies that the habitability of this continent has been non-existent for tens of millions of years. A shift of Antarctica towards the South Pole would be observable on the continent as a movement of the magnetic North Pole, indicating a change in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. Such changes are recorded in the paleomagnetism of rocks. The direction and thus the location of the continent at the time of recording can be measured from this paleomagnetism. Indeed, such changes have occurred, but they took place during the Oligocene, explaining the onset of uplift during that geological period, and the speed at which this occurred was on the order of a few centimeters per year. Rapid changes in the direction of paleomagnetism in Antarctica, indicating dramatic consequences, did not occur during the Vaxilian and Holocene, and as mentioned, there are no known continent displacements at the speeds required here. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge runs through the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and has only a few branches. No geological evidence has been found on the ocean floor that these branches were larger or emerged more than they currently do above the water in recent geological times. The American and European continents, possibly connected by an island chain, show no geological indications of such changes. A catastrophic event in the vicinity of the Azores causing significant land submersion would have left geological traces. The ocean floor around the Azores has been relatively well studied, but no evidence has been found on the sea floor. 
Even the traces that a tsunami would have left on the seafloor or in the inundated areas on land were thoroughly searched for but not found. Disastrous volcanic eruptions did occur during classical antiquity in the Mediterranean region accompanied by tsunamis. Possibly the Minoan civilization on Crete was obliterated due to the volcanic eruptions on Santorini. The archaeologist Spiridon Marinatos discovered the Minoan port city of Akrotiri under a layer of volcanic ash on Santorini in 1967. However, these events fall outside the Atlantis myth, as Atlantis would be located beyond the Pillars of Hercules, meaning outside the Mediterranean Sea. Unless Plato meant something different with the Pillars of Hercules than is commonly assumed. The sea level rise at the beginning of the Holocene, 11,700 years ago to the present, initially occurred rapidly. The previously dry North Sea area largely filled within a few human lifetimes. This applied to all areas now submerged by a marginal sea up to about 120 meters in depth. Once the rise due to the melting of ice caps had started in earnest, it was not possible to sustain settlements, if they existed, in such areas for long periods. People would have had to move several times within a human lifetime. Although this event occurred long before most civilizations, it's not entirely implausible that the Atlantis myth, as well as flood stories, dates back to this period. The theories about the existence of Atlantis are diverse and controversial. Geological data can only provide general support. The rapid sea level rise at the beginning of the Holocene can offer a partial explanation, but it must be considered that a low sea level is associated with a very cold climate. We know the story of Atlantis, have shown the different possible locations, heard what the critics say, but all this brings us to the final question. Does Atlantis exist? That's a question that seems to go on forever. But there were no recent investigations or discoveries confirming the existence or location of Atlantis. It's essential to note that the search for Atlantis has been a historical and archaeological challenge, often fueled by speculation and various theories rather than concrete evidence. Numerous hypotheses have been proposed over the years, suggesting locations ranging from the Mediterranean to Antarctica. But none have been universally accepted or scientifically proven. The Atlantis narrative, originating from the dialogues of Plato, remains a subject of fascination, inspiring both serious scholarly inquiry and speculative exploration. Given the lack of recent breakthroughs or significant findings, the quest for Atlantis continues to be characterized by ambiguity and mystery. Archaeologists, geologists and historians persist in their efforts to sift through historical records, geological data and underwater explorations, hoping to unravel the enigma of Atlantis. And so ends a new adventure for us. The legend of Atlantis will remain a myth that continues to fascinate researchers and enthusiasts. Whether the sunken city will actually be unearthed somewhere or will surface remains to be seen. For now, we must make do with the story alone. Thus, another epic myth has been unveiled. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, click the bell and subscribe to our channel to not miss any myth revelation. We look forward to seeing you at our next adventure, where we unveil a new epic myth.